السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وقدوتنا وإمامنا محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We ask him to bless us in every single way We send complete blessings and salutations upon the master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us nearness to him Not only in this dunya or in this world but even when we pass away My brothers and sisters in Islam We need to ask ourselves a very serious question The serious question is What is our aim in life? What is your aim in life? What do I want? out of this life. The truth is there is only one answer for a believer. There is no two answers. The answer, well, if you were to ask those who don't believe, they will probably tell you, I need to get good results, I need to have a good salary, I want to have a beautiful spouse, I want to have children, I want to uh, perhaps be able to afford a beautiful house, go on a luxury holiday every year, one or two. Perhaps I want to have a cook, so I don't need to cook. I want to have so many people who work for me. I want to be driving the most luxury of cars. I want to have the latest of apparatus. I want to have, you know, when we say apparatus, we're talking of technological advancement. We want to be up to date with it. We want to have that which is tip top. I want to dress in the most beautiful, conspicuous way, and I want the best smell and scent. And I really would like health that is going to be so beautiful, so I'm going to have. Uh, perhaps a personal trainer, I will have a little gym of my own, I will be able to eat healthy and I will be able to look well and that's it, my life is set. Mm. The truth is, a lot of our young children will give you a similar answer. Mm. That's the truth. They would be running after phones, perfumes, clothing items, cars and so many other things. And that is a reality. But worse than that, some of us have a similar answer. Let's face that. We lose reality. We lose track of what is definitely going to come. So I want to today, inshallah, in the next few minutes, take myself down the path of reality to answer that question through a whole lecture, inshallah. Let's look at it. Say I achieved everything I just mentioned now. I got it. A day comes when I die. Some people don't even like the topic of death. The reason is they say this sheikh, this maulana, he dooms us when he comes to talk. He actually tells us that which makes us feel like we're already dead as we leave. The truth is, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ tells us to continue engaging in a reality check. Increase the mention or the remembrance of that which will destroy all those wants that I just mentioned now a moment ago. All the desires I want to have. You know, you ask a man who's married, a fact, that brother, how's life? He says, hey, I'm the happiest man in the world. MashaAllah, that's a beautiful answer. But he's looking for another wife. <laughs> It's the truth. So sometimes the women intentionally keep you unhappy so that you don't look for another one. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us strength. The point I'm trying to raise by this is No matter what we have in terms of bliss, we're looking for more. If any of us from, meaning any of us here now, have earned so much wealth that we didn't dream in our lives that we were going to earn that much, honestly speaking, don't you want more? Aren't you not really satisfied? You could be a millionaire. You plucked your first million before you ever dreamt. Now, did you stop? The answer is no. So, If you have had everything we spoke about, you gathered the millions, you went on the holidays, you even went for Hajj and Umrah, and you did whatever else you wanted, a day will come when you're standing, you and Allah, alone, you are standing in front of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then what's going to happen? You will be asked a question, and so will I. But look, we sent you into the dunya, into the world. Do you even know why we sent you? Do you even know the purpose? Do you know that all these things I mentioned moments ago, they are just the deception of the world. There are so many people who've led happier lives than those who have had everything, yet they've also died. How did they achieve that contentment and that happiness? 
my brothers and sisters, you will only achieve that contentment through the link with the one who made you in the first place and sent you on a mission. We existed before birth. Did you know that? The arwah and the souls were alive before birth in a different place altogether. The only details of which we would know in the hadith and in the Quran is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we existed. Then the same maker who created those souls, he put the souls into these little bodies that we have today and he said, I'm sending you on a mission. And don't lose focus. Be focused. Here's the mission. When, you, when your game is over, we're going to bring you back. And then we're going to see your score. SubhanAllah. And at the end of it, we will give you a prize. We will give you a trophy. Now, I've sat back, and I'm sure you have, and we've seen how, SubhanAllah, not only the little children are so enthusiastic when it comes to games and PlayStation and so on, some of us here who are adults are guilty of playing so many games that our wives are complaining. Some of the, the wives, they actually are seeking divorce because they say the man, the man is married to the games. The whole day he's playing in front of the screen. It's sad, it's embarrassing for us to say this, but it's the reality. However, we don't even learn from the game. But you know what? When you play a game, how long does it last? Game, you're lucky, you have one life, two lives, perhaps a third life, then it's over. It says game over, and it flashes at you, and it makes a loud sound. Don't think I play, but we know, when we were kids, we used to play. So, at that stage, if you take a careful look at it, the game is over, and who's the winner? The one during the game who was able to score the most. And you move from one to the other. The latest of games, you would find they lock for you the next stage. You've got to open it by clocking it. And then you clock the next one, and the next one. A few days ago, my son was showing me a game where you fly aeroplanes. And at a certain point, you've got to pay money to actually fly an aircraft of your choice. And it's just a game. It's on a phone. So they make money because the child convinces dad, hey dad, you know what? This is an A380. Come on, it only costs 30 rand. Can't you use your credit card or something and let you know, play? Subhanallah, the lesson I always derive from these things is that we in life are in something much more important than a game. It's a reality. It's something Allah has put us into. But some of the rules are similar. Do you know that? Some of the rules are similar. What kind of rules? There's a starting point and there's a game over point. And you have to score as many goals as possible. And you know what? The beauty is certain things will give you a, a boost. You know, you get a promotion. For example, you have the path, right? That which is compulsory, which you need to definitely do. When you do that, there will be two things involved. One is to fulfill your duty unto Allah, so you're not sinful for that. But depending on how you fulfill it, you can clock a greater mileage. We have all come for prayer here for Salah, right? So we will fulfill it by the will of Allah. But if we fulfill it with maximum concentration, we were enthusiastic about coming here, we arrived with a clean heart, we fought the hatred and jealousy that we have against whoever else it was, whilst we were coming to the masjid so that when we leave this house of Allah, we are in a pure, happy state. If that is the case, we definitely deserve more and a bonus in terms of reward. And the person who merely came, fulfilled and walked out. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. You know, sometimes when you're playing a little computer game, you might find at a certain point if you do so well, then they give you a promotion and you go up to another point and you perhaps clock bonus points of 20 or 50 and so on. We have bonus points, but again, it's not a game. It is something that is the most real of everything because on a game, or in a game, you can always start again. And you can always say, okay, let me play again. This, you have one chance. But you know how beautiful the chance is? Allah says, one of the best ways of scoring points is to just say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, here we are referring to Tawbah, and there is a way of doing it. One of the best ways of scoring points, say for example, I bust up somewhere, and I made a big mistake, I committed a huge sin. Allah says, hang on, you're still alive, you still have a chance, the game is not over. So what you do, you admit that you were wrong, you ask for forgiveness, you regret it, and you say you won't do it again. Guess what we will do for you? We delete it, and we give you bonus points. Subhanallah. We delete it, and we give you bonus points. This is why, my brothers and sisters, if any one of us 
feel like they've committed a sin that will not be forgiven, then they have definitely gone into the trap of shaitan. Because that's what shaitan wants us to think and to feel. You know what? You've done something very, very bad. And this, there's no chance. Now when that happens, you think your game is over. So there's no more enthusiasm. But this is why when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with this deen for us, one of the most important points that he drove home was never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. He had hope even with the mushrikeen of Makkah, Abu Jahl and Umar ibn Khattab at the time. He was not even known at that time as radiallahu anhu. But because of that hope, because of the enthusiasm, because of the constant dua to Allah, that is how we all today are Muslimin by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't lose hope, turn back to Allah. Don't worry, for as long as your game is not over, in terms of death, you still have a lot of hope. You can still get to what you are supposed to be aiming for. So, what is it that is my goal in life? You can word it in two different ways. You can either just say paradise, which is correct. So, if I were to ask you, why were you made? What is your goal in life? The true answer of a believer is paradise. One word, that's my goal. Because when I have achieved whatever I wanted in this life and I arrive at death, I am now worried. Do you know I share with you something? Some atheist sent me an email not too long ago and he told me something that now I can use really as ammo basically against those who are atheists. He tells me, look, I do not believe in God. But whilst I am alive and I've become very old now, I've done whatever I desired to do in my whole life. Everything I wish to do, I've done it. I've earned, I've just, I'm old now and I'm at the point where I am worried about death. I'm worried about death. So he says that I need help understanding what's going to happen. Immediately I pounced on the point and I responded to him saying, you actually do believe in God, just admit it. The reality is if you are worried about death now, all these years you were not worried. Why? You had energy, you had power, you had clout, you had eyesight, you had pool, you had so much of the worldly terms. I was a solid man, I drove the best of cars. At 240 I paid the fines, I did whatever, or I worked my way around it, one phone call, and it was squashed. That's the word they used. Hey, but can you squash it for me? He says, yeah, I can do it. I'm sure you've heard that. Don't worry, we'll squash it for you. Well, they've now come up with new methods that you cannot squash. But the lesson from all this is you enjoyed your life. Now that you're old, you're clocking age, you've become grey. You're standing at the point of death. Why are you so worried about what's to come if you really do not believe there's a God? SubhanAllah. So, it's a fact. Every one of us, when we get old, we get wise. But the point is, how many people around us, their gains have been cut before they got old? They passed away before they got old. And then what happened? Subhanallah, we ask Allah to have mercy upon them and to let their death be a means of lesson for us to lead our lives in a way that we score as many goals as possible every single day. I said and I repeat that life really is like the hourglass. You know the hourglass, the sand glass they call it? As you are born, it's turned around for you. The amount of sand in your hourglass is determined. And the grains begin to go down. They will not stop. But can I tell you what? You don't know when that hourglass is going to come to an end. Someone will have to just tell you. Or should I say, you will be told at the time, right? It's over. It's gone. Let's see your score. What did you score? That's exactly what happens. Why is there a day of judgment? To gather the score. So now you see, subhanAllah, this one's got salah. He's got a lot of tawbah. Wow, what a big point. Big point. He has the love of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in his heart. That's a big bonus, subhanAllah. That's a huge point. He has so much of silent deed. He helped the orphans. He helped the widows without an ulterior motive. You know, sometimes you say, hey, he, what do you do, brother? He says, I help all the widows in the city. How do you help them? He says, you don't want to know. <laughs> May Allah protect us. That is a disaster. But the truth is, you help them for the sake of Allah, you talk points. You help them for some other reason, then you may achieve that reason. But when you stand at the point of death and all your scores are being gathered, you won't really have many points. In fact, it might be minus points. May Allah protect us. So, these points are added up at that particular stage. 
And this is why we say, the second way of wording, if, if I were to ask you, what is your aim in life? You say, the pleasure of Allah. That's, that's also the same wording. One might say paradise, one might say the pleasure of Allah. You might take a look at it, some might say there's a difference between the two, but the reality is one is with the other. One comes with the other. When you get your trophy, may Allah grant us the best in terms of the trophies of the Akhirah. May He give us the companionship of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Akhirah. That is not impossible, my beloved brothers and sisters. Not impossible. I tell you, we stand a better chance. The reason is, we have come 1400 years later. We still believe in it. We still have the passion. We still have the flame in our heart when it comes to the love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we haven't seen, meaning we haven't seen him as in, we are not from amongst the Sahaba in this world, the companion. And Allah says, you stand a chance of being with him. Why? Al-mar'u ma'a man ahab. A person will be with whom he dearly, passionately, correctly loves. May Allah grant us that in the true sense. Amen. So, when, when we look at what we are supposed to be achieving in life, my brothers and sisters, we need to strike a certain balance. What is the balance? The balance is Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar Oh Allah, grant us goodness in this world. Grant us goodness in the life after. So we balance it at 50-50 for now. Then you said and protect us from the punishment of the fire. So now it's no longer 50-50 because there was one du'a for the dunya, there was one du'a for the akhirah, meaning one for this world and one for the next. Then there was another du'a also for the next. You see the difference? So now there's two for the akhirah and one for the dunya. So I would like to think that that is the message for me and for all of us to say, you know what? Your rough balance, two thirds of everything you do must be preparation for reality that's to come. And one third, because I have to live in the world, mashallah, we are not saying that because I'm a believer, I need to drive a 1960 jalopy perhaps out there. No. We are not saying because I'm a believer, I need to wear tatty clothes, I'm not allowed to use perfume, I'm not allowed to look well. No. You are, but never lose focus. That's the point. That's what we started with. Be focused and be determined. So, do not let your little breaks that you have in between make you think that that is the real life. No. The real life is the Akhirah. The real life is that which is to come at the point of death. Do you know there are billions of people who've died before us? Billions who've died before us. And do you know there will come a day, no matter when, when I have to go, you have to go. The other day I was talking to a youngster and he tells me, you know, why do I get a feeling that I can't go right now? I said, well, that's not only you. Sometimes we all get that feeling. Wait, you know what? We know deep down Allah can take us anytime. But the way we lead our lives is like, no, this point I can't go. You know, a person who's planned, for example, to commit dinner, may Allah protect us all, really. May Allah create an obstacle miraculously whenever we plan something wrong so that it gets blocked. That's, that's the dua. To be honest with you, sometimes human nature makes us plan things that are perhaps not so grand. Let me give you an example. A person says, you know what, it's time for salah. I'm reading just now. That word just now means, uh, don't worry, I mean shaitan's plan for now. Let's see if I can come out of it. That's what it means. If you say there's a lot of time for salah, I'll read it just now. I promise you that just now is the first step of entering into shaitan's plan. So, and we, we are telling ourselves, I'm going to get out of it now. Don't get in it in the first place. It's salah time, let me read it and then I'll do what I was doing. Because if I die in the interim, only Allah knows. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and may He make us from those really who are uh, always fortunate. I know of a youngster also who, uh, who told me that, you know, there was a day when uh, he, he was thinking of missing salah. And sometimes what happens, we become regular with salah and shaitan comes and makes us irregular once again, erratic. You achieve so much and because of one or two things that have happened in your life, you just go back. You know, people quit smoking and suddenly they go back to you. And you know, it changes the heart. Why? Because as Muslims, we're supposed to be coming closer and closer to our grave. When I stand, I can tell Allah, Ya Allah, I have my weaknesses. But you know, I tried so hard, I cut, cut, cut. Just the intention Allah says will reward you upon it. If you intended that, look, I'm definitely getting up what I have you. And you died before that, do you know that the reward of it is written already? Allah, even though you died before. That's the deed that will be written next to your name, although you died before doing it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant it to us. So, the, the beauty of this is, 
When Allah has blessed us with so much, we must be focused. We have to really understand we are all going to go. Like I was saying moments ago, that I was telling one youngster, the same youngster who said, I don't feel like I am the one who is going to go right now. I said, okay, do me a favor. If you think you are going to live forever, there's two or three things you need to ask yourself. Everyone before you who has gone, they were perhaps healthier than you, wealthier than you, they're stronger than you, it's one way or another, they all have to go, okay? So you give yourself a, how old you would like to live, up to, tell yourself. So say for example, let's be thumbs up, 100 years. I want to live for 100 years, okay? Number one. Number two is, tell us, how do you want to die at that point? Think carefully what I'm asking. How long do you want to live? And how do you want to die? Choose it. Think about it and think about it hard for the rest of today. How long do you want to live? And how do you want to die? Do you know man's true answer? I want to live forever and I don't want to die. I don't even want to think of how I'm going to go. So Allah says, we'll do you a favor. We'll take you when we know it's right for you to go. And we'll take you the way we know it's best for you to go. SubhanAllah. That's Allah. This is why, whether it is a murder, whether it is whatever else, whether it is a car crash, whether it is a heart attack, whatever it is, that's Allah's plan. Because if we were put to be given a choice, Wallahi, we would not even want to go, even after 200 years. We say, Allah, come on, it's just 200 years here. SubhanAllah, Allah says, you know what? You're going to between 60 and 70 is the average. We will take you how we want. That's why my brothers and sisters, those of us who've lost loved ones, how they went, just thank Allah, He knows. When they went, just thank Allah, He knows. It was the right time, the right way to go. This is for us who remain behind. I'm also going to the same place. But I've just made it clear we have no choice regarding when and how. Because had we been given a choice, we would have really died. It. We wouldn't even have answered that question. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us with the So my brothers and sisters, I want to remind myself and yourselves, and this was the whole aim of today's talk, was focus upon what the reality is. In the dunya, you will have to earn. You will have to go perhaps to get your little qualification, your degree, your job. And mashallah, some will be given more, others will be given less. Bottom line is not how much you have in terms of material wealth. Wallahi, it is the contentment of the heart. Bottom line is how happy you are inside. Think of it. If I am a happy person, even if I am mediocre, middle class living, low class living, and I'm happy inside, what more can I ask for? I'm going to go. When I go, the millions I've earned are not really going to help. I, I, I met a certain uncle who one day told me, you know what, you're right. When I thought to myself when I was younger, the first million I earned, I'm going to now quit and I will uh, retire and that's it, I'll, I'll be set for another 20 years. So the first million I earned, guess what happened? The currency started crashing. Mm. And then he says, when I earned a million, I said, no man, you know what, this is not enough. I need another million. And I was blaming the currency. But he says, that time I had so little that to me a million was a big deal. When you get a million, it's like a dollar. It's like one grand. It's, it's no more, you know, a big amount. It becomes small again. So if you think about what you have, and then the uncle says, I got to a stage where I earned 100 million. Wow. And he says, when people used to ask the question around, you know, I used to appease myself to answer within me, to say, no, I'm preparing it for my children. There came a stage when I said, I'm taking all my grandchildren. Old uncle, he's telling me. And I, then I told him, I said, you know what? Forget about your grandchildren, your children, they'll come with their own sustenance. Worry about your own Jannah. What have you done for it? He says, no, 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 definitely I want to start giving out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to do this and I want to do that. I want to become closer and this. I said, the way to get closer to Allah, get closer to the ulama and take from them the goodness and excuse them for their weakness. That's something important. If you want to get close to Allah, you get close to the ulama on condition that you take from them the goodness and their human weakness, you excuse them for it. You don't take a weakness of a man. I am a human being. I may have faults. I do have faults. So if you think, hey, that's my man, subhanAllah, let's go. And you find me doing one or two things that are not befitting perhaps a person of, you know, who is looked up to. You have to realize, human nature makes the man do this. We remove this. This we're not going to follow. This we excuse him for. But... The rest of the goodness that the person's come up with, the man is, subhanAllah, trying. Let's take this from him. And this example is for all the ulama in our midst. Allah is going to question you. 
You want to be close to Allah? Be close to those who have studied the deed. Those who have studied what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought, so they can give it to you. Be close to them. But remember, they are not prophets of Allah. They will have witnesses. So what Shaitan does, he comes to us and says, you know, there's not a single scholar in the whole country whom nobody says something bad about. So just leave these guys, let's do our own thing. If that's the case, we're dilly dallying on the road. The GPS is there. It might take you around a different road, but at the end of the day, it's going to take you to your destination. It shows you where it is. You know, sometimes you punch in the GPS and it takes you down the road and brings you back up the road. And you're wondering, but I could have just gone this way here. Why did it do this? But ask yourself, didn't it take you to your destination finally? Subhanallah. So you make friends with the correct company, the right people. Your destination, inshallah, is there by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A little bit of, perhaps you might have gone a little bit further and come back, excuse all that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Why am I saying this? Because that helps us focus. When your friends are wrong, you lose focus in a way that you think you're focused, but you're not. You think you're focused. And you start helping yourself by saying, you know what, ah, I listen to peace every day by Allah. I just heard his Ghafoor rahim And you know what, the drugs I'm having every day, it's okay because I know Allah is Ghafoor rahim Those other guys are eating interest anyway. So what's the difference? <laughs> this all is part of the plan of the devil. Don't get stuck in. Learn, I'm going to use the word game. Learn the game. But remember, it's more important than a game. Learn what life is all about. And I end off by asking the same question. My brothers and sisters, what is your purpose in this life? What is it? What do you want to achieve? At the point of death, you will be able to tell yourself, you know what, this is what I've done, 